The San Francisco Giants are going to the playoffs for the first time since 2016. They beat the Padres last night and clinched a spot in the 2021 postseason. They're the first team to do so. They've been the best team in baseball uh, more often this season than any other team by far. So it's just been a magical season for the Giants. This is step one. Giants hope the division is the next step to come. So we'll break it all down on today's Locked on Giants podcast. You are Locked on Giants, your daily San Francisco Giants podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Giants Baseball, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. My name is Ben Kaspic, and on this show, we provide daily episodes Monday through Friday talking about the San Francisco Giants in a way that's data-driven and rational, but also simple, passionate, and accessible to all. I'm a former contributor for the baseball statistics and analysis websites Beyond the Box Score and Rotographs. I've been podcasting about the Giants since 2015, and I'm a lifelong fan. And coming up on today's show, guess what we're going to talk about? The Giants have clinched a spot in the 2021 postseason. And unlike 2020, this is not a Mickey Mouse season. This is not a 60-game season uh, in which there was a lot of weirdness. This is not a season in which they expanded the playoffs. And, you know, like last year, some teams that were 29 and 31, again, 60 games, Uh, and below 500, those teams made the playoffs. And actually, that was the Giants' record, and they missed the postseason by one game. And what did the Giants do? What did Farhan Zaidi, the Giants' president of baseball operations, say the day after the Giants were eliminated from postseason contention last year? He said the goal in 2021 is to make the playoffs. And those statements got a lot of attention, and people thought that it was not realistic. And a big reason people thought it was not realistic was because the Dodgers and Padres were in this division and the Padres were making moves and looked like a team that was going to make it really hard for the Giants to contend for for the foreseeable future. Well, how did all that go? How did that go for the San Diego Padres, who come into town and lose their fourth straight game uh, and their record now, 74 and 69? They are fighting to stay above 500. That's kind of for them what's going on. They are trying to not, uh, they're trying to make the playoffs and they're, they're fighting that 500 record right now. So it tells us a number of things. Number one, it's really, you can't predict baseball. And number two, don't bet against Farhan Zaidi and the Giants because this team, the way that they're run right now uh, from top to bottom And I know there was a lot of kicking and screaming along the way when Zaidi was brought in and kind of took a new approach to roster construction. When Gabe Kapler was hired, we're going to talk about Kapler's numbers as a giant and compare that to what happened in Philadelphia and compare what Kapler did in Philly versus what Joe Girardi did in Philly because the Phillies fans swore that the issue with that team was Kapler and that, you know, a veteran traditional manager coming in was going to solve all their problems. Well, guess what? That hasn't happened. So we'll get into all of that today, but let's let's be a little bit more positive. I don't know why I, I get like uh, worked up about this stuff, but the fact that the Giants have clinched a spot in the playoffs, they're the first team to do so this season, deservedly so. I mean, they just all year long have been the pace setters in Major League Baseball. They're 94 and 50 that matches their win total from their best season from a regular season perspective of any of the championship years. Nine wins was what they had in 2012, and that was the most they had in 10, 12, 14, or 16. Any of the times they've made the playoffs in the last decade plus, they have not eclipsed 94 wins. The last time they won 100 was in 2003, And the San Francisco Giants record is 103 wins. So the Giants have a very legitimate shot of breaking the San Francisco Giants record 
for wins. If they just win 10 more games, that would be 104, which would be the most in San Francisco Giants history. The franchise record is 106, and that's over 100 years old back when they were in New York. But let's see, the Giants have 18 games remaining, so 10 and 8 is all it would take to set the San Francisco Giants record uh, for, for best season that they've ever had. And the fact that this is the team that's doing it, this is the iteration of the Giants that is having this type of success is truly remarkable. It's truly amazing. This has just been a phenomenal season and one that we should not take for granted. I know that there was some question about would they celebrate clinching you know, what they clinched last night, which is, to be clear, if anyone's confused, what they clinched last night was that they're at worst going to be in the National League wildcard game. At best, they win the division. At worst, they're going to be hosting that wildcard game. I do believe, I meant to confirm this last night, that they have clinched not only to be in the wildcard game at least, but also to be the home team at least, because uh, the Reds can't catch the Giants, and the Reds are currently in that number two wildcard position, and the Padres can't catch the Giants. Nobody can catch the Giants except the Dodgers, uh, and that's in the NL West. But in the wild card race, nobody can catch them. So uh, they will host the wild card game at worst. Kind of breaking news here. I haven't seen anybody talking about that. But it's a foregone conclusion. Whether If it wasn't today, they would clinch that sometime in the next couple of days. But at worst, the Giants are going to host that wild card game. Hopefully, you know, that doesn't happen and the Giants can win this division. They understand that there's work still to do. It was kind of a subdued celebration, but the fact is that in baseball, these clinching moments don't always come around. It's a less predictable sport than the others. Like, for example, the Padres. They thought that they were going to be the team to finally challenge the Dodgers, and at worst, they were going to win 95-plus games and, at worst, be the home team in the wildcard game. Well, guess what? Like I said, they're fighting for their lives right now, and they're currently half a game out of a wild card position. So Padres right now on the outside looking in of the postseason picture, which is a perfect example of why the Giants were absolutely doing the right thing by celebrating last night. They broke out the champagne, took a team picture. They had the shirts. They had the goggles. Just a great, well-deserved celebration. So coming up next, we'll get into a little bit more about it. We'll talk about the game uh, somewhat there was a really interesting quote from Buster Posey and we'll talk about some some records that are being broken by this 2021 Giants team it's just been a phenomenal run and we'll talk more about it next we're back and better than ever all eyes are on the gridiron as teams are back to start another football season as always bet online is your number one spot for all the pro and college football action this year with a new updated site and interface, even more odds, props, and contests, betonline.ag continues to be the number one source for everything football. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today to receive your 100% welcome bonus. That's double your initial deposit just for signing up. Don't forget to use promo code NFL100. From football, basketball, boxing, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. How about baseball, too? Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online, the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports. Bet online, your online sportsbook experts. Promo code locked on. All right, as promised, we are going to get into more of the details about, about what went on last night. Uh, with the Giants clinching a postseason berth. Hopefully the first of many celebrations, right? Like many, because if the Giants were to go all the way to the World Series and win it, you would have a celebration to win the NL West. Well, not necessarily, but either to win the West or to win the Wild Card game, right? And then uh, to win the Division Series and then to win the Championship Series and then to win the World Series. So that potentially four more champagne celebrations. That's the goal. Four more of those, which would just be awesome. And we got used to it, to be honest, right? We got used to it in 10, 12, and 14. They were just, they had a thousand different champagne celebrations. And that's what it's all about. And you know that's what it's all about. The players will tell you that that is what it's all about. 
So we have a quote from Buster Posey that I want to get to. Also want to just kind of reflect a little bit on this 2021 season, look at some of the key contributors, how they got here to be at this point. But this quote from Posey is actually going to shed a little insight into how they got here. And it's more than just building a roster of certain players and that those players were good enough to be able to do this. It's way more than that. So let's just read what he had to say. It's kind of a long one, and it has a couple of different points that I want to get to. First, he says, as far as regular season teams go, for me, this is number one. The way we've played this year from start to finish has been nothing has been nothing like I've been a part of. The game's constantly changing and evolving, and those teams in 10, 12, 14, 16 were great teams, and this team's right there with them. It's been pretty well documented how the game has changed over the last five to seven years, and I think this group has done a nice job of adjusting to it with some veteran players making adjustments, as well as some new guys coming in and playing the game the way that really it has to be played now. I think today's a perfect example of us. We used a bunch of bullpen guys and only gave up one run, and that's effective now. So he was really thoughtful when he gave this answer. He paused like for a while before saying um, that new guys are coming in and playing the game the way that it really has to be played now. And he's talking about veteran guys making adjustments and new guys coming in. And that's exactly right. And of course it is, right? Like Buster Posey knows what he's talking about here. Uh, And he's absolutely right. This team does not get to this point uh, with just kind of traditional baseball thinking, right? A big part of their success is, I mean, it all is connected, right? Farhan Zaidi being hired and the approach he brought to roster construction, but then significantly like Gabe Kapler. And we're going to talk about him in a second and comparing the numbers in Philly to here, but the Gabe Kapler being hired and then the coaching staff, like I want to give a huge shout out at this moment to Donnie Ecker, Justin Veely and Dustin Lind, the giants, three hitting coaches. Again, a lot of kicking and screaming when these guys were hired right? People were, they were untraditional. They didn't have major league experience and they like, they didn't play major league baseball and it was a large coaching staff. And so people all along the way, there was a lot of pushback against what the giants were doing. But, you know, if you've been following this show, we have been supportive of this the entire time. And it was, and I, I don't want to say like a foregone conclusion But this is the direction of the game. What these hitting coaches do is they bring a modern approach to hitting instruction. Just as an example, right? We're just talking about hitting right now. There's also the, you know, Andrew Bailey and uh, JP Martinez, I think, is is an assisting assistant pitching coach. uh, And what they've done with the pitchers, too. But on the hitting side, right, it's, it's not just like traditionally hitting coaches just kind of set up a tee for you and told you to hit the ball uh, hard on the ground to the right side or to the opposite field. Well, those days are over. We used to legitimately say, and correctly so, that hitting coaches didn't really have an influence on a major league team. The hitters were who they were, and the hitting coaches were just kind of there to support them in their preparation and just honing their craft and kind of, you know, maintaining their skills right but these days that is not the case right like there were examples of players like justin turner and jd martinez who made private adjustments they they sought out private instruction uh, from these kind of new age hitting coaches who helped them transform their swings and they got so much better on the field and a lot of it had to do with driving the ball in the air not trying to hit ground balls but instead trying to hit you know, hard contact in the air, because that's where the reward comes. That's where your home runs, your extra base hits, your damage comes from. It doesn't come from ground balls, especially with all the shifting. So that's what Buster Posey is talking about here, is that the game has to be played this way. He's also talking about the fact that they had a bullpen game 
and it's been very effective. Like Dominic Leone going out there and shoving in the first couple innings, and by shoving, I, he's just attacking the strike zone with high velocity and good breaking pitches as well. The Giants are the epitome of modern baseball right now, and it is a huge reason why they are 94 and 50. Uh, I, I don't say this out of any disrespect for Bruce Bochy, but I often find myself wondering if Bochy was still here and that coaching staff that he had, you know, Mullins and whoever else uh, was still here instructing this same group of players, how many fewer wins would they have? Right? Like, I mean, maybe it's not just Bochy, but the coaches. Like, I don't know exactly where, like, which individual position in the coaching staff, uh, which individual person on the coaching staff is adding what number of wins. But I have zero doubt that they have added a significant amount of wins. And Farhan Zaidi was interviewed after the clinch last night, and he was talking about how uh, they have the best coaching staff in baseball. And and he, he said it like he really believes it. And uh, definitely for me, they're in the top like three. There, there are some other teams Uh, Tampa Bay Rays come to mind, Brewers, Dodgers, teams that get the most out of their players, but the Giants are right up there right now. And I think Donnie Ecker is someone who gets a lot of credit uh, within baseball circles. And hopefully that these guys are signed to long-term extensions because they are a huge part of the Giants' success. And in baseball, uh, oftentimes when you have a lot of success like this, teams will pillage your your staff and your your employees like they want a part of what you've been able to do and so if you have an assistant hitting coach a team will come come along offering potentially a main a head hitting coach position and it's technically an upgrade and so the protocol is that teams will allow those employees to interview and that's how you potentially lose guys and so that's definitely a possibility coming up into the off season Giants lost an assistant pitching coach last offseason when um, I'm blanking on his name, but an assistant pitching coach for the Giants went on to be the full pitching coach, Ethan Katz, for the uh, Chicago White Sox. So anyway, I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but I just thought that was a really interesting note from Posey. He's a thoughtful player, and it's just absolutely right. And he they deserve all kinds of credit for, for being open-minded. Uh, he and Crawford and Longoria – and Belt have just kind of embraced this new staff, embraced Gabe Kapler and what he's sought to do. Everybody's worked together, and the result is clear. They have somehow, with this roster, I mean, not to say that they're bad, but at all, but, you know, if you look at on paper, like the Dodgers versus the Giants, 99 out of 100 or 100 out of 100 people would tell you that the Dodgers have more sheer talent but the Giants are greater than the sum of their parts the Giants get the most out of their players and Gabe Kapler and his maneuvering also has a lot to do with that and you know we're waxing poetic here but there's still a lot of work to be done they could easily not win the division get a one game playoff and lose and the whole thing would be over so a lot of work still left to be done but I just think it's appropriate to pause at this moment and kind of acknowledge the amazing accomplishment that they have achieved here. So coming up next, as I said, I want to talk about the numbers of, you know, Gabe Kapler in Philly versus Girardi in Philly versus Kapler in San Francisco, pretty eye opening numbers. And uh, like I said, talk about some of the key performers for the Giants, how they got here and some historical numbers that the Giants uh, have put together in the last few days and how they're going to push history the rest of the season potentially that's how good of a year it's been and as it winds down they're going to get closer and closer to some historic numbers so all of that is coming up next but first does this sound familiar you've got one device that lets you catch the game live another that lets you stream your favorite shows you're watching sports highlights on your phone and you've got your neighbor's best friends log in for the good stuff well i want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called DirecTV Stream, and it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. 
That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part, no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. That's directtv.com. Compatible device required. Content varies by package. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure the often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning? Is your Odyssey an LX or an EX? And wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry. You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Why choose to spend 30, 50, even 100% more for the same parts from a chain store or car dealership? Random example, a Honda, a Honda Odyssey fuel pump is 353 from a chain store and just 216 from Rock Auto. You can ask you know, a dealership what the part is that your car needs, order it from rockauto.com, and then have them install it. I've done this myself, and it saves you a bunch of money. It's really, there's no need uh, to have the dealership mark up these prices on these parts you can buy from rockauto.com. So go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck, right? Locked on in their how did, how did you hear about us box so they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, as promised, we're going to continue to talk about the San Francisco Giants being the first team to clinch a spot in the playoffs. Let's just get to that Gabe Kapler thing because... I've been teasing it all day. It's currently up on Twitter and uh, hopefully going viral. It's got a lot of attention so far. I kind of knew that it would. It's simply stating the numbers, right? Uh, the Phillies under Gabe Kapler. This was the huge disappointment that he brought to their city, evidently, uh, according to Phillies fans. Under Gabe Kapler, the Phillies went 161 and 163. That's really not bad, right? Considering that, you know, before he came in, they I think they had a pretty bu- a bad year uh, right before Kapler was brought in. And then basically two 500-ish seasons, and it's an overall winning percentage of 497. So then the next number here is the Phillies under Joe Girardi. And the context is that uh, the Phillies fans and media swore that Gabe Kapler was the problem get him out of town. Uh, The schmuck Giants made a huge mistake hiring this guy. Bring in a veteran manager like Joe Girardi, a traditional baseball mind, and he was going to solve all the problems that the Phillies had. Gabe Kapler mismanaged the bullpen, evidently, and that was the reason why their bullpen had, you know, problems. And so anyway, Girardi was supposed to save the day and save the Phillies from this awful new school direction that they were supposed to be headed under Joe Girardi, the Phillies, 100 wins, 103 losses, three games below 500 in far fewer games. Gabe Kapler was two games below 500 in far more games. So that's a 493 winning percentage for Girardi in Philly, 497 for Gabe Kapler. So he was better with that team. Now, how about the Giants under Kapler? So this year and 2020, when the Giants were 29 and 31, the Giants under Kapler, 123 wins, 81 losses, 603 winning percentage. That's 42 games over 500. Absolutely incredible, right? And keep in mind, the team that Kapler took over legitimately expected that 2020 Giants team to be one of the worst teams in franchise history. A lot of people legitimately thought they were easily a hundred loss team if there was a full season, of course. But when the season was shortened, people were talking about how they would definitely struggle to get to 25 wins, which would have been what, 25 and 35, 10 under 500 and just 60 games. Instead, I mean, they started off poorly, right? They went eight and 16 and then the rest of the way they were on fire. And you know, this year they've just been the pace setters, like I said. And so the problem in Philadelphia was not Kapler. 
And I'm just going to go on record. I've said this a lot, but maybe some of you are listening for the first time. But hiring Gabe Kapler was like the best decision that Farhan Zaidi could have made when he was searching for a manager. Gabe Kapler has done a, <laughs> I stuttered there a little bit, a phenomenal job, a phenomenal job. He has, he is the, he should be unanimous for manager of the year, which by the way, go back and listen to some of our shows back in March. And uh, speaking of bet online, which we talked about a minute ago, there were some really, really uh, attractive odds to bet on Gabe Kapler to be manager of the year. It was basically uh, his odds to win manager of the year were as low as anybody in the game, even teams that were expected to be terrible and are terrible, like the Orioles. He was down there, way down there. He was down there with Bud Black and and um, the Diamondbacks manager. And I said, take a bet on Kapler because I think they're a very underrated team. And if if I'm right about that and they have a good season, he's probably going to win the award because that's how it usually works. Is like unexpectedly good teams, their manager wins manager of the year. So anyway, he's going to win it. I hope at least one of you took that advice back then. But he it's not just Kapler, but he has done such a great job of managing this team, uh, you know, the the value added by what they've been able like all the the new methodologies they've put in place and specifically again the coaches that have been brought in is so much greater than any kind of small close type of decision in a game that can be criticized like maybe and I, I'm not even criticizing him but I'm saying maybe people have specific criticisms about oh in this situation he shouldn't have gone to that reliever because of this those things are tiny compared to the value added by the coaching staff and a lot of the in-game management, the platooning, the the line change, as they call it, with the lefty lineup, the righty lineup. That is where all the value has been added. So just want to point out some facts, like I was saying, about this incredible run. The Giants last night scored six or more runs. I think it was nine to one was the final score. Uh for the eighth straight game, six or more runs, which is the longest streak in San Francisco Giants history. Amazing. Like this team just keeps setting records and there's going to be a lot more as we close out the season. They hit four home runs, which is uh, I think the 13th time that they've hit four or more home runs, which is the most in franchise history. It's also the most in baseball right now. They're the earliest team to clinch. Or, yes, in franchise history, this is the earliest They've ever clinched a postseason berth, September 13th. And I just want to point out, again, when I'm talking about don't take this for granted, the Mariners haven't made the playoffs since 2001. So, you know, we were about ready to cry if they didn't make the playoffs for the great year. But plenty of teams have had much worse uh, situations, like the Phillies. We're talking about the Phillies. They haven't made the playoffs since 2011. And so, you know, the Giants make it in 12, 14. 16 and then a little bit of a drought but they're back in 2021 uh obviously again the division remains the goal but this team is just so good and hopefully they can keep it going here 18 games left uh we'll we'll have to save the conversation about the specific players we've talked about all these guys a ton this year crawford posey rough belt uh lamont wade jr yastrzemski uh Kevin Gosman, Anthony DiSclefani, Rogers McGee, this whole team top to bottom. That's just been such a theme for this season is the depth and every single guy contributing. So, you know, again, taking a moment to celebrate today, but now Tuesday night, the work, you know, they get right back to work because there's, there's work to do. Giants are the best team in baseball, but the Dodgers, unfortunately are number two. And so, if the put the Giants in the NL East and they're about ready to clinch the division, even with, you know, the first place Braves, I'm not saying take out the Braves. I'm saying include the first place team. Giants would still be about to clinch that division. But unfortunately, second best team in baseball is in the NL West. So the Giants only have a two and a half game lead. Pretty much any other division, they'd be sitting pretty right now. So that's the reality of it. And we'll be back to talk about it every step of the way. Uh, we do these shows Monday through Friday. They're on YouTube. And everywhere else you can get podcasts, we're free on all platforms. 
If you like this show, please consider rating it or leaving a review. It helps me out so much. So thank you in advance. And thank you to everyone who's done so already. Once again, my name is Ben Kaspic. Thank you so much for listening. I can't wait to be with you again tomorrow. Congratulations to the Giants and to you uh, for getting to experience this. And we'll see you next time. You are now Locked on Giants.